Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. In just a minute, I'll be bringing on my guest. My question for you is, do you want to hold the vision for a cosmic galactic future? My guest today is Elizabeth April. She is a cosmic intuitive channeler with the ability to go into other realms and dimensions in order to gain access to information through vibration and visuals. By having the ability to explore past lives, Elizabeth works with individuals who want to comprehend their past, present, and future. Elizabeth April is most excited exploring the topics of spiritual awakening, cosmic disclosure, and quantum physics. Whether you're sitting in her audience, watching her YouTube channel, or participating in a session, the insights channeled through Elizabeth will leave you feeling in tune with the limitless possibilities existing in the universe. And to find out more about her, go to elizabethapril.com. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and accessconsciousness.com. They do beautiful energy healing work out into the entire world. You can join one of their workshops, online courses, products, books, all at drdanehere.com as well as accessconsciousness.com. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. This show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. We are still in number 100, upper 100 uh, ranking in all of self-improvement in the USA on Apple Podcasts, as well as several other countries. I'm, gonna have, I'm having a great time watching the countries be added and we are 50 and under in France, in Israel, in India, in Portugal, in Canada, et cetera. So thank you guys, because the show is what it is, because you resonate with the message, because you let people know, because you subscribe, you leave reviews, and because you send me your emails and you let me know what's resonating with you and how this is impacting your life. This is Dare to Dream. And when this show was created over 13 years ago, it was originally created because dreams were so important to me. How to create them and how to help you to get to the finish line too so they became your reality. And boy, have we all evolved over time. I think it's not just dare to dream anymore and creating a bucket list and a goal list, but it's much more about like the bigness of life, the whyness of why we came here, right? The light beings that we are and all that we agreed to do, boy, were we brave souls. We're fun souls and we're brave souls, a show because we can all see what's going on right now. And so for those of you who are interested and who already work with me, I am a visibility and media expert. I run a visibility hub and I show you how to write a page turner book and take your book from idea to completion. I also run a company that does a fully done for the author guaranteed international best-selling launch, as well as the ultimate visibility formula, how you can get booked on radio and podcast interviews and get massive results. I've got free tools and templates for you as a gift giveaway. Just go to debbiedashinger.com to learn more. And with that, we start the show and I welcome Elizabeth April to Dare to Dream. Elizabeth, it is so great to finally have you here. Thank you so much, Debbie. I am very excited to be here and uh, have a very juicy conversation with you. Juicy, indeed. I want to start with something that's been going on with me, and I'd like to see how many people out there feel the same. You know, over the 13 years I've been doing this show, I've had interesting people on who have channeled, uh, you know, Bashar, and doesn't matter the list of names, but I've had many people and pretty extraordinary conversation with Lee Strieber and so forth. Loved, loved right? These were game changers. The truth is, I was sort of a, "Mm, that's interesting, right? Maybe not really my conversation. Transformation's my gig. And then something completely changed. I cannot tell you why. Sort of like ayahuasca, right? All of a sudden you get called and you're there. 
And I felt the same way. And this is how I found you and all the amazing work you're putting out. Suddenly, your conversation, your channeling, your information from the Galactic Federation, it's like, okay, this is everything. This is what I need to be doing right now. So I want to start there and talk about how many people are waking up right now to this conversation. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. It really, I've been channeling, I mean, I've been clairvoyant my whole life, but I've been really on the mission of channeling and figuring out the truth behind the reality Mm. uh, for about 10 years now. And I never thought people would be openly talking. I never thought I would be openly talking about the interdimensional beings that I channel and reptilians and adrenochrome and, you know, all of this stuff that really does sound absolutely insane. But at the same time, I've always known it to be true. That's my truth and my reality. And so many people are waking up at this time. And when I was first introduced to the concept of the 3D, 5D shift back in 2010, 2011, by the Galactic Federation, because I don't do any external research, um, they basically said that there's people who, in a sense, are not going to make it to the shift. And I basically thought to myself, so all my friends, all my neighbors, all my university classroom students, all my family members, none of them are going to make it. They have no idea what's really going on uh, behind the scenes in this matrix reality. And nowadays, 10 years later, I'm super happy to announce that most of those people, friends, family members, people I thought could never change or never question this reality are really starting to wake up. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean that you have to be a spiritual guru um, or you know meditate seven hours a day to be awakened. All that means is just to sit and just question what has been handed to us, question this reality around us. And that is basically the fundamental aspect of awakening is questioning. So spiritual awakening is something changing right now around manifesting and around the idea of creation. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, I'm really into quantum physics and a lot of my channeling has to do with, you know, simultaneous time and other dimensions and, you know, quantum leaping. And I really truly believe that manifestation is just utilizing the ability of intention to hop into the parallel reality that always existed. But the second that we observe it, the second that we ask for it, we can actually hop into it. Mm. So nowadays, you know, people, even just like my mom the other day, she sent me a text message and she said, so I went to Costco and I shopped around for about an hour. And then when I got back in my car, the car time clock had the exact same time as when I left the car to go shopping for Costco. And she's like, I thought that my car clock was off or wrong. So I checked my phone and it turned out there was zero time that passed when I went to Costco. And she's like, how is that possible? So this is someone who, in a sense, is a very simple, beautiful, wonderful human who is my mom, who is having these weird glitches in the matrix, who is basically these glitches are allowing these people to really wake up and question the fundamental aspects of this reality and 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 to manifest as well and realize that we have the power to step into um any outcome we want Mm. you mentioned adrenochrome i've never heard that word before what is that (laughs) talk about going down the rabbit hole um okay so adrenochrome is a chemical compound found within blood and reptilian shapeshifters actually feed and drink adrenochrome when they feed off of human beings. Um, and this allows them to be very psychic because they don't have a lot of the DNA and the capabilities that human beings have because we are hybrid beings in our own right. So I went to a Save the Children or you know, Child Pedophilia Trafficking protest in Hollywood mm-hmm. uh, not too long ago, and there was hundreds of people and we were all shouting, no more, no more adrenochrome, which blows my mind because I've 
known about these reptilian blood and sex rituals for years and years now. And once again, I never thought that this would be common knowledge. And here are these people shouting no more adrenochrome, um, you know, and saving the children, right? So it's, it's just mind blowing how many people are waking up to a very deep level of knowledge and awareness. Is this like the Jeffrey Epstein people that you're referring to? Yeah, so I really truly believe that there is something called the Illuminati. I really truly believe that there is a deep state. I really truly believe that there's a shadow government run by elites. And maybe the difference between me and other people who believe this is that I believe that that group of high profile, um, you know, very wealthy elites are actually reptilian shapeshifters. Maybe not all of them, um, but you know, I've done a lot of remote viewing and astral traveling, and that has allowed me to actually go back in time in ancient human history to really observe what, what went on, you know, back then. And uh, I've understood that the reptilians have been here to suppress humanity basically since the dawning of humanity. And now we're finally starting to wake up to some of these truths. And therefore, through waking up, we're actually taking our power back. It's interesting that you talk about this. So I have a couple of questions, but the first is reptilians. Because I, well, I think about Trump. I think about reptilian. And uh, I made maybe the faux pas of saying uh, something about reptilians as though they were all not the most positive creatures. And I was corrected and actually told that it was a racist remark that there were some really wonderful reptilians. So I'd love you to speak to that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, it's really incredible. I do strongly, firmly believe in channeling many different interdimensionals that there are good and bad in every single species, mm. just like we have here in human beings, right? And so uh, reptilians, I mean, it's tough to say that them as a whole are trying to suppress us and take us down, um, but they definitely have been one of the main species here to kind of control and manipulate this reality. There are also reptilians here who are going against the norm of their own species and who are trying to liberate humanity. And now what's really interesting is that more and more, there are these reptilian beings in these underground bases who are starting this resistance movement. They're actually rebelling against their own kind because their own kind haven't treated them uh, very nicely throughout the years. So I actually work with one of these beautiful, transmuted, kind-hearted reptilian uh, women, and she actually points out in my astral traveling where all of the military reptilian bases are on planet Earth, and we do energy work and white light work on these bases to basically transmute the energy. We're not trying to take the dark side down. We're not trying to suppress them. I mean, we're not, we wouldn't be any better than them if that was what we were trying to do. We're just trying to get them to a place of unity consciousness rather than uh, polarity or singularity consciousness. And for the reptilians who are trying to take down humanity and to control this planet, why children? I mean, there's so many ways that darkness can work, but why would you inflict so much disgusting pain on children through pedophilia? Yeah, there's two, there's two main points here, and I'm sure there's many more, but these are just some things to think about. One is they're looking for a pure soul um, because there's something about the blood and the bloodline of the pure soul. And young children have a pure soul. They're not tainted yet by ego and attachment and distrust and, and those kind of things. So that's a part of it. Um, and the other part of it that I've channeled recently is that the reptilians, you know, a lot of channelers say that this is a prison planet. I don't necessarily believe that, but I do believe that there is a system at play here that is um, creating so much trauma in a way that it actually traps us into the karmic system. So there's so much trauma inflicted in these poor children's lives that they're actually forced to come back to this planet and relive another lifetime full of that trauma. And they're actually kind of stuck or trapped within that trauma 
karmic based system. And, and the reptilians are full well aware and they know that if they inflict a certain amount of trauma in a certain way, um, these poor souls are actually going to get stuck to come back here to recreate or uh, to play out that, that karma in order to neutralize it. So it's really unfortunate that um, this has all gone on, but also things are changing. And I do believe in a lot of ways that quarantine and COVID is a huge distraction away from what's really going on on this planet, which is the liberation um, and the freedom of these children, which is ending the feeding of these beings, which in turn is unlocking the matrix so that we can all rise to the peak of our potential. Mm, wow, I love that. I want to talk a little bit more about that because at the beginning, before we started the show, you and I were talking and, and we sort of capped off our conversation with how important this time, what a precipice this is. I have to say, I don't think I ever thought I would live through a period like this, so much uncertainty, so much seeming like, oh, you know, we'll get through this, it'll be another month, it'll be over, and yet this is ongoing. So what is your take, and, and let's talk about like, what's really happening and what can we really expect? What should we be prepared for? And how should we be being right now so that we're fully showing up for this time? We clearly made a, a pact to be here, we're here. So how can we fully be doing what we came here to do? Absolutely. We're in a very tumultuous, to say the least, time, not only at a global collective level, but also at an individual soul level as well. So what most people will be feeling right now in the middle of 2020 is really push and pulled in between 3D and 5D. So most people will be revisiting um, old decisions that they've made, revisiting old people that have been in their lives, revisiting, you know, um, issues or traumas or emotions, even past life stuff is all coming up at this time. So there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of crazy, weird, random symptoms that people are getting that are actually all about purging, releasing, but also awakening and ascending at the same time that you're revisiting all of this old energy and old cycles and old traumas and emotions, you're also going to be starting to activate your DNA, open up your consciousness, you know, open up your third eye and really start to receive downloads and messages and intuitive flickers and really stepping into a newer and a higher vibrational frequency. This is really tough. The people right now who have not done the work are going to have the toughest time. The people who have already done the work are having a pretty good time right now. Um, and, and the people who have kind of done the work, but not really, are still really pushed and pulled in the middle. I don't believe that we're going to see a balance or equilibrium officially globally on this planet until after 2024 there is a huge timeline wow. right now between 2020 and 2024 basically what i've channeled and received is that there's going to be a massive collapse at a global level mm. of every system that has not served humanity as a whole in that unity consciousness and if we think about the global economic educational, political, um, mass media, you know, none of those systems have really been serving us and they really do all need to collapse. So it really takes a certain amount of mistrust within society and within societal norms in order for us to question, um, just like I was saying, questioning the matrix and that allows us to break through it. So Things will, I believe, will get worse before they get better. Doesn't mean that your own reality has to get worse. Mm. And sometimes it does have to get worse before it gets better if you haven't dealt with all the stuff that you haven't dealt with. So it's just going to be a bit of a tumultuous time. Um, I do recommend, even though, you know, I don't want people to take this in a fear-based way. I just want to say that 
getting prepared with things like food and water, like just basic things. Um, I even recommend uh, investing in silver as well, like actual physical material wealth. Um, I just recommend that because we don't really know where things are going. And there's a lot of different timelines that humanity could potentially hop into. And I'm always of the mindset of, I'd rather be safe than sorry, especially when I know things are going to get a little bit worse before they get better. I keep hearing we're ascending or when people, you know, tribes out there talking about, yeah, it's uncomfortable because ascension's going on. But what does that actually mean? Are our cells changing? Is our DNA changing? Is our dreams changing? Is, the, is our physical reality changing? What is that? Yeah, good question. So I believe, this is just my perception, I believe awakening, ascension is just simply raising your vibrational frequency. So at first, it's going to be a more of a perception change. So I get asked this all the time, what does 5D look like, right? And, and a lot of people just believe that they're either going to be taken off this planet or they're going to be transported to a new planet or everything's going to look different. And I have to break the bad news, which is saying, no, I mean, this reality is going to look exactly like you, you know it but your perception around this reality is gonna change dramatically. Mm. The vibration within you needs to change first and foremost, mm. then and only then will the aspects, the physical 3D aspects of your reality, your friends, your relationships with your family, your job and career situation, your living situation, your romantic partner, all of those things are going to change in order to harmonize with the new vibration that you're sitting in. And right now, like I said, a lot of people are back and forth between the old vibrations and the new vibrations. So you've got to make a choice. And most of the time, those choices aren't easy to make because we've got to say no to a lot of things and a lot of people and a lot of old patterns and behaviors that are no longer serving us. Mm. Will our animals be safe through all these changes? Yeah, a lot of people ask me about their animals and a lot of people ask me about their kids because it's not like, you know, your dog knows what a kundalini awakening <laughs> is or what the chakra system looks like or what have you. Same thing with kids. And what I believe is dogs, animals, and um, children are also going through the ascension and also going through the awakening as well, you know, and we see some dogs getting into accidents or getting sick or, you know, pets kind of having tough issues. And once again, I believe that those are also all awakening and ascension symptoms. Um, and I do want to say too, vibrational, physical, we are going to see physiological changes, DNA shifts and activations. We're going to see cellular changes and activations as well, which do create a lot of pains and once again, exhaustion and weird symptoms. Um, but naturally, I believe that animals will ascend automatically. It's a soul thing. As long as their soul is willing to change with the times, which most of of the animals and the souls are, you know, signed up for this timeline right now. Same thing with children. They're at such a high, pure vibrational frequency that I have never seen any issues with them ascending and moving on. Once again, they signed up for this. Wow. Their vibration is prepared for this. Wow. You channel an alien who is a mantis named Khan. And a lot of people perceive that mantises are actually advanced healers and doctors of the ET civilization. Do you find this to be true? And, uh, and along the lines of what you're saying, does Khan have anything to say about healing and medicine and tending to us at this time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the Khan, the mantis that I channel is more of an observer of the universe, right? So I know a lot of mantis beings who are more physical, like in lower dimensions, who are um, master geneticists, they're master healers, they work with biology, they work with genealogy. Um, the, the mantis that I channel, he's very, um, He's very much so a bigger picture type of observer, um, you know, and he, he works with vibrations and frequencies. So right now, as far as healing, I have received a lot of messages, especially from Palladians, because they're all about humans um, aligning to the highest vibration. 
And it really comes down to listening to yourself and discernment. I was just mentioning in a video not too long ago that a lot of spiritual teachers are getting hijacked. Um, and in that way, they're not, they're losing touch with themselves, which is losing touch with pure source um, and going down different pathways because us as teachers and healers as well are also um, getting challenged, right? And so it's not right for any teacher to say, well, you have to be vegan in order to have the highest vibration or you have to do this in order to be on the right path. Um, ultimately, it is always up to the individual to figure out and discern for themselves what feels right for them, but that the energy of healing is so important right now because we are taking a step back. We are looking backwards. We are revisiting our Akashic records. And there's a lot of trauma and emotion that's coming up right now that is needing to be healed. And that's where, you know, there's a huge focus on going inward at this time. Mm -hmm. What about Mandis beings? providing humanity with solutions to some of the more prevalent health challenges like Alzheimer's, like cancer. Yeah, I believe that there's technology out there and solutions out there for many of the major diseases. And I believe that even in our in our current lifetime, we may see um, the exposure of all of these solutions come out eventually. But at the same time, all of the beings, you know, especially all of the really high vibrational ones have certain laws of the universe that they have to abide by. And one of the major laws is the law of non-intervention. Mm -hmm. So we need as many human beings on this planet as possible asking for a solution, you know, and pulling that vibration in rather than say just donating to an organization or charity and hoping that one day they're going to come up with a solution, which I just believe is, is big business at the end of the day. Um, so we need as many people awakened and tuned in and, you know, intentionalizing what it is that we want. That's all there for us, but we do have to ask for it, for it um, because they can't override our own free will and make choices for us. And I think that a lot of people really struggle with this. And even when I first started speaking about all of this stuff, people would ask me, well, why do, you know, aliens, if they are so good, or interdimensionals, if they are so good, why do they allow so much suffering in the world? And the same questions goes towards God. If you're religious or Christian, why would God allow so much suffering in the world? And if you take a step back from this individual reality, you start to realize the bigger picture of this universe is binary. We live in a polarized universe for a reason. If we wanted to be an interdimensional being without any sort of challenge or polarity, that's who we would be. If we wanted to be a soul without a body, that's who we would be. We chose to be a human being with the challenges. And I believe that challenges only allow us to grow and change and move forward and adapt and you know, and get excited about life. Um, and so, you know, it, it's boring if you just had all of the solutions and all of the power and all of the money and all of the, the knowledge, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have some challenge. And that's what we're here for. And, and our biggest challenge, I think, as lightworkers, and everyone listening to this is a lightworker, I believe that our biggest challenge is waking up the rest of the world and, mm -hmm. and allowing everyone else to see the power within as well. Yeah. That is so huge what you just said, and I really agree. And I think that's why I was, I feel um, blessed, if you will, that my expertise is in visibility. Because for light workers, a lot of spiritual people have had past lives where things did not work out very well, going visible with your yeah. gifts. But this is a time when it's time to heal that stuff because you've got to be visible. You've got to have a voice. And I really believe like we're the lamplighters for the path forward. Like it is the way forward. And I think what I hear you saying when you're talking about uh, the aliens and the interdimensionals and that we need to access the question we need to ask for help. It sounds like what they say about angels. Angels won't just step in and say, oh, there's Elizabeth. She needs X, Y, Z. Let's just give it to her. No, Elizabeth has to say, please help. And then they have 
the open doorway to come in. So is that also true for the aliens assisting us at this time? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's true for every being in the entire universe. That's one of the biggest universal laws of non-intervention. Um, and, and, you know, and once again, that being has to ask for what it wants in order for the intervention or the, the gifts or the knowledge or the opportunities to arise. So it's the same thing here on the planet. And luckily, a lot of us are asking for the truth right? Just in general. And a lot of the truth is being disclosed right now, which is a very exciting time to be alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. There's a Stephen Hawking's quote, which is, it will be difficult enough to avoid disaster in the next hundred years, let alone the next thousand or million. Our only chance of long-term survival is not to remain inward looking on planet earth, but to spread out into space. So as we get closer to open contact, which I'm sure many of us hope will be very soon with the Galactic Federation, do we need to be concerned about ET civilizations that may not have the very best interests for humanity at heart? Slavery, piracy, resource extraction, et cetera? Or are we pretty well protected about inviting in that contact and help? Yeah, that's a good question. So ultimately, you know, from my own channelings and experience, this planet has already been, you know, taken advantage of from our resources and even human beings themselves being a resource. You know, we've really already been um, oppressed and uh, vulnerable to these not so great interdimensional beings, these low vibrational beings. So I believe that moving forward, we're actually gonna change the energy and vibration. And in the past, we've been very ignorant, you know, we've been very close-minded as a humanity. And now that we're opening ourselves up, we're gonna be attracting beings who are at the right vibration, the mm -hmm. vibration that matches us. So I don't think that we're gonna have any sort of issues moving forward with open contact because the not so great beings have been here the whole time. And they haven't actually allowed that contact or that exposure to happen specifically for a reason, then we would really truly know what was going on and we would probably rebel against it. If we don't know what's going on, then we don't ask questions and we don't change the paradigm, right? So that's what's happening right now. And that's why oh, there's a lot of um, you know, systems that need to collapse in the coming years. I have this really cool invention that I like to see happen. You know, there's 23andMe and there's Ancestry.com, but I'm waiting for something where you take a blood test or a cheek swab and it comes back and says, oh, you are a hybrid. Here's your starseed family. And we're going to tell you exactly what universe and planets and tribe you come from. Yep. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what? I, I, I also understand too that, you know, we have 90% junk DNA within us and we only have 10% of that DNA activated, which blows my mind that this is not a conversation that is happening more often, especially within the scientific field. But I do believe that one day we are going to be able to have that test. And if anything, I, in my own little conspiracy mind, I feel like 23andMe and all of these other facilities are probably testing to see what bloodline we do come from. And I, you know, just, this is not confirmed. I have not channeled it in my own conspiracy mind. I feel like they're probably already doing something like that just to kind of, you know, monitor and keep track of who's who and what's what on this planet. Hmm. I like it. That's cool. <laughs> I need access to those files. Yeah. Yeah. So how, could somebody figure that out? Is there a way to invite in that information or do a meditation or does somebody need to get a private session with someone like you? Yeah, so I don't do any more private sessions right now, uh, but ultimately I do believe that all of those answers are lying within. I also do believe that everyone is naturally psychic and everyone can do all the things that you and I can do, which is really exciting. And I think people are waking up to that. So what I would recommend for people is just to set the intention that you want to know who you are. 
And maybe it's an article, maybe it's a conversation that you have with a stranger, maybe it's, you know, a newspaper, I don't know, I don't know why there would be aliens in newspapers, but you know, maybe it's something that kind of comes across your way or a video on the Pallades or what have you that's going to strike a chord with you. If you just listen to your soul, all of the information and all of the resources that you need are out there. You just have to take the time to really just sit and listen and your soul will tell you what is right and what is wrong or what is for you and what is not for you. So I'm, I'm going to hearken back to something you said, which is you don't do private sessions anymore. I, as somebody who teaches visibility, I just have to say, I really admire what you've created at such an auspicious time. So obviously there's, there's great reason. And at the same time as another female entrepreneur who's been doing what I've been doing for 13 years, I, I just really notice your branding. I really notice your website. I notice how you operate your YouTube channel and more. And of course, who you be and your gifts is a whole nother piece. Without that, the rest wouldn't work. Uh, Curious minds, because there are other light workers who actually may need to hear this about how could I be more visible? How did you create the empire? I'm going to go there. How did you create the (laughs) empire that you did? And it's pretty quick. You've only been doing this about a decade right? Did you hire a team? Did you seek out like people at the top of their game to handle the pieces you don't do very well? How did all of this manifest? Yeah. So I feel like I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. Um, You know, even as the kid making a business out of um, selling a newspaper route or, you know, or selling lemonade on the street corner. Like I've, I've always been in this mindset of, I've got something to give um, and understanding how people operate. So in my mind, you know, I am definitely a little bit of a control freak. So every aspect of my company, whether it be video editing or producing or, you know, a new marketing idea has all been my own mind, my own creation, which uh, in my mind, it's like, I don't want to delegate something to someone that I don't know anything about. So I learn it first, I excel in it in my own business, and just now I'm finally starting to delegate and bring a team together, um, which is really amazing because I don't have the time to do all the things that I wanna do in my business. And I really feel called at this time as well to take a huge leap of faith and to start getting myself out there I guess in a more mainstream way, which is tough because I'm, you know, the alien girl or whatever, right? I'm the weird one. Um, But at the same time, you know, I'm just really called to connect to the masses Mm -hmm. because I feel like there's so many people out there that have been questioning at such a deep level of who they are. And for me to spend one hour with one person rather than one hour with thousands of people, you know, it's just a no brainer as far as disseminating this information. And that's always been my goal. And I think that the reason why the branding and the business has had to be the way that it is, is because I don't even know how to identify myself or categorize myself. So I've really had to sit every couple of years and rebrand or re-identify or ask myself, what is the label that I resonate with that also other people are going to resonate with as well? Um, And so that's always been a really big struggle for me. You know, if I just wanted to do what I wanted to do, which was channel interdimensionals and, and astral travel the universe, I wouldn't have any branding at all. But what I really want to do is I want to take all this knowledge and information. I want to package it up into something that's easily digestible. And I want to give it to everyone on this planet. So branding has always been super important for me. And, uh, and I still find a struggle. I mean, right now, the word that I use for myself is paradigm shifter, mm-hmm. but I've gone through clairvoyance and psychic and awakening coach and 3d 5d activator and you name it I mean it's like I can't really you know just have one thing or one defined you know label it's tough so do I understand you saying that you've been at the helm of your own branding this entire time yeah that's crazy (laughs) really because that's very rare 
to be gifted in one area and to have a genius in another. You're so photogenic. <laughs> like I'm sensitive to all this stuff because I do this stuff out in the world, but I'm also in front of the camera. You are so photogenic and your branding is so spot on. So this is so meant to be. How mm -hmm. did you, how did you decide on YouTube? Cause you've got a massive following there and how did the people find you? Yeah, very interesting. So I started, I started my YouTube channel in 2016, but I was channeling the Galactic Federation and other beings in past lifetimes. I actually started my career doing past life regression. Hmm. And uh, yeah, and so that was all back in 2009, 2010. And so around 2016, I got a very strong message from the Galactic Council and they said, okay, this is, this is the time you have to go online. I didn't have any social media at that point in time. Then I said, okay, let's get all of the things. And I really resent social media as well. It's really tough for me to just package it up and put it, I, I'm getting better at it, but you know, it's been, it's been a struggle. And so I was really plateaued for years actually on all social media platforms and there really wasn't any growth. And yet I was still channeling new information. I was still very excited about all the information that I was channeling. And it just didn't seem like it was um, catching on to society. And so then in 2019, so last year, I had a huge breakthrough of why I have such a fear of being seen as wow. a spiritual leader, wow. right? And, and it was just a lot of shadow work, a lot of releasing that, a lot of letting go of the fear and feeling confident in myself to know that it's okay that I'm a teacher as long as I'm always still a student, you know, and maintaining that balance. And so I broke through that fear. And then with my first video that really like picked up, which was, this past March, especially with COVID, which is insane to me because it was a channeling from the Galactic Federation. And I tune into them myself every single month and I never thought humanity was ready for that. And then the first video that I do channeling them blows up and it really felt like people were ready. So I was doing a lot of work in the quantum and I'll just kind of tell you a trick that I do. And, and you know, this isn't a secret, other people can do this as well. So I got this huge download of information uh, at the beginning of this year, and I tune in to the collective consciousness, right? This consciousness grid that's around planet Earth, and I upload, so I download the information, then I upload it to the collective consciousness, and then two weeks later, I put out the video of all the information. And when I uploaded the download that I received, I attached my name, Elizabeth April, to it. So I said, so if you like this information and you want more, just come check out my channel, Elizabeth April, in the quantum, right? In the astral realm. And then I had all these people saying, oh my goodness, it's so weird because I got this downloaded message two weeks ago of the same information. And I'm laughing to myself thinking, yeah, I'm the one who uploaded that to the collective two weeks ago before I put out this video. And working in the quantum realm in that way of uploading it before I put it out there in the physical, right? So you work 5D to 3D and apparently it works really well because all these people ended up finding me after I started working in that quantum realm. Uh, so that's basically how I got my first kind of viral video on YouTube. And ever since March, it's been a lot of progression, a lot of movement, a lot of... Um, a lot of people who are hungry for the information and and i'm laughing because this is all this information i've been downloading for the past 10 years this is not new to me uh but everyone's like oh my god this is mind-blowing stuff uh which is cool right that they're there uh, at this point in time i never thought that they would be there at all so it's great that to see them there now oh i love that you shared that so it's like you pre-paved the way for the actual <laughs> video and what it sounds like to me is like a movie trailer, right? You put out into the quantum field a movie trailer of what you were then going to do a couple of weeks later. You attached credits. <laughs> so your name is in the credits. And I love that it was received at that level. Like this is the genius stuff that light workers need to be doing. Like we can't think. I think in these, this hard, dense reality about putting these things out there, we have to be working in fields that 
actually are probably very comfortable to us, but we haven't been playing in because we've been trying to assimilate into a society that is, you know, at some level, not really who we are. Yeah. Absolutely. So powerful. <laughs> yeah. So you're talking about this channeling of Galactic Federation. You've been doing it for 10 years. March, you put something out, ba-boom, finally. People like, <laughs> I'm ready and awake for this information. What is new right now in your monthly channelings with the Galactic Federation, Elizabeth? What's new that you're perceiving and receiving from the Galactic Federation? And maybe I might precipitate this by saying, let people know who don't know what that is. What is the Galactic Federation? Yeah, for sure. So I define the Galactic Federation as basically a giant government system for the universe. And I studied global political economy in university. So when I first heard about the Galactic Federation, I was actually super disappointed. And the reason why is because I was like, come on guys, you're eighth, eighth dimensional beings and you need a government system? Really? Like, have you not figured this out yet? And then of course you understand about the binary universe and all they really want is unity consciousness. And, and there are a lot of beings out there in the universe who don't want unity consciousness. So they're basically just here to kind of keep the equilibrium, keep the peace, right? So they're not, you know, a heavy hand like the government that we know of on this planet. They're definitely a lot more open and, and once again, all about the collective rather than the individual. And so that's basically who the Galactic Federation are. They have giant Galactic Federation motherships in every solar system all across the universe. Any species and any being who has basically compassion, love in their heart, and wanting the best for the collective can join the Galactic Federation. Mm. And there's many different positions and roles and councils and things that they do in there as well. As far as new information, um, you know, like I said, right now, it's like the Galactic Federation is kind of just taking a step back, even though I'm channeling now publicly um, their information and insights, but ultimately they're allowing humanity to just kind of carve our own path mm -hmm. at the point, at this point. Um, a couple of years ago, back in 2017, they were freaking out about some sort of timeline switch that happened on planet Earth, and they were really worried about the, the, the future potential of the timeline that we were moving into. They never told me exactly what that timeline was, but it wasn't good. And nowadays, I go over there, and they are so cool, calm, and collected. If anything, they just keep telling me everything is exactly the way it needs to be. Everything is on track. We are on plan for um, the movement moving forward, for the ascension, for the awakening. So um, in relative perspective to the past, they're pretty cool, calm, and collected based on the state of the world right now, which is it really calms my soul to know that they know that we are, we've already shifted into the best possible timeline. Once again, it's just going to take some collapse in order to get there. So what does that look like? Do you have a sense of what the other side looks like once the collapse and the chaos has completed the aftermath, the Phoenix rising, if you will? Yeah. So um, I don't believe that it's just going to be one amazing, incredible event. I think it's going to be a couple amazing and incredible events. But of course, that's my perception because I believe that what's happening with COVID and quarantine is an amazing and incredible event. But that's once again, just my over optimistic perception. So yeah, so moving forward, after all of this, I do believe a 5D Earth, 5D planet where everyone's awakened, at least willing to change their vibration and raise it, taking responsibility for themselves. I believe that major patents on whether it be medicine or technology, such as free energy, um, solving a lot of environmental issues, a lot of health crisis issues, a lot of educational issues are all going to come to light. Um, I believe that we already have a lot of these solutions and they've just kind of been held back and repressed by the elites or, you know, this group of shadow government. So we're just kind of waiting. We're in this holding pattern. I think that there's a lot of, you know, children that are being freed right now on this planet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're making sure that everyone is 
inside and safe and not really causing a huge um, stir, you know, planetarily, because I think that if people really woke up to what was going on with adrenochrome and reptilians and the children, it would be a little, it would be too much to bear, more to bear than COVID in a sense. So it's like, you know, one, one bad, what's the best out of the worst kind of situation that we're in right now. So we're just purging at an individual level, at a collective level. And I do, I do believe that we are going to see a utopian society moving forward. Like I said, you know, the building that you're living in is still going to be existing in this utopian reality, uh, but there's going to be a lot of things that are going to change as well. I would like to see stem cell therapy be released out to the public at a cost that is not prohibited, but can, you know, this is for me, the therapy I'm really fascinated with and interested in trying. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what about other ET technologies? Um, Unity plus uh, energy generators, devices that create more energy than it takes to run them and gravity drives that power their craft. Are there sources in the ET community that are reliable and that say that there are prototypes for these devices that currently exist on Earth? Can you confirm this or elaborate? Mm -hmm. So right now, a lot of the interdimensional technology has been taken over or kind of sold to the military and the government. Mm. So a lot of that technology on planet Earth, once again, it's been repressed, it's been controlled, it's been um, hidden away from the major you know, mass public. So I do believe that a lot of this information and technology is gonna be released moving forward. I don't know if we're gonna see, mm, I haven't really seen it myself as far as like flying and hovering craft and and vehicles and stuff moving forward into our lifetime. But I know that they have that technology already Uh, and free energy technology. I mean, that's been out there for quite some time and it's, it's about time that all of that gets released and also things like the financial and economic collapse and the rebuild of that and, the economic financial reset as well i think we're going to see in our lifetime because that's a system that has been controlled repressed and you know um kept away from us for quite some time so i'm thinking that maybe like a universal monthly income something like that for every citizen on planet earth would actually really alleviate the need for the nine to five and the grind even though we still need people you know, um, working in in all of the sectors of society, but they're not working from a survivalistic mindset. They're working from, you know, this thriving and this uh, wanting to do good and and do their part mindset. And, And I really truly do believe that we have these members, these alumni, these star seeds and light workers from the Galactic Federation who have volunteered to be humans right now who are embedded in every sector of society uh, to once again, once they get that action call to really transmute and transition and, um, you know, move society forward. Do you think there's going to be an election? You know, I don't really receive too much information on politics. And uh, what did the Galactic Federation say recently? What did they say? Oh yeah, they said that um, the the it's already predetermined, it's already decided is basically what they said. And they said that it was all going to plan. So I'm not sure if that's like the greater plan, you know, on the planet or if it's their greater plan or what exactly they were referencing. But yeah, apparently it's it's already predetermined and it's um, it's all going according to, you know, their greater plan. Interesting. Yeah yet to be seen. So what's next for you? So here you are, you now have the platform, but I'm very clear you are growing exponentially and that this is like, you're, there's no stasis for Elizabeth April. So is the rocket ship that you be, and especially clearing out the visibility stuff, I wanna remind people what Elizabeth said about that, that is so important mm. to do that shadow work. What's next for you? Yeah, so I think taking a step into the mainstream and just like not wanting to be seen and having fears and uh, and especially trust and safety issues around being seen as a teacher, 
I, I broke down those walls, but the next wall is being seen to the mass public. It's so easy for me with the people that I've attracted in the past little while, because they're all hungry for the information. It resonates with their soul. Every once in a while, I get the random guy who thinks that I'm crazy, which is fine. You know, we're going to get that. But stepping into the mainstream, I'm going to get a lot more polarity. Yeah. And, but I also know that I'm not living my truth and my purpose if I don't at least try, especially being here in the fold of all of it in LA. You know, it's really important for me to kind of step out. So next two big things that I'm planning, uh, I wrote a book in 2019, end of 2019, and I might want to talk to you about that actually. Mm -hmm. um, so the book was channeled through me, uh, 40,000 words in four days, which is insane. Wow. I've been trying to write a book for like 10 years, if not longer than that. And this just needed to come through. I really believe in it so deeply. I'm going to be self-publishing in 2021. So I'm kind of gearing up for that and really, you know, getting people excited about that. And then the next big step is a TV show, once again, kind of stepping into the mainstream and kind of getting Hollywood talking about who I am. Good. And I think one of my biggest fears is I don't want to be labeled as the alien girl because I'm not, I don't just talk to aliens. I'm not just a psychic. I don't just look into past lifetimes. I don't just remote view and astral travel. Like I do so many things, you know? So I know that stepping into mainstream is going to pigeonhole me almost instantly. Mm. And that's part of my fear. And part of my mindset recently has switched to say, you know what, I can play the game. I'm here to play the game. I'm here to infiltrate, uh, per se. And I know, just like you mentioned, that the package of Elizabeth April is, you know, it's easily digestible. So I can kind of trick people, this is what I, in my own mind, I'm like, I can trick people with how I look and then reel them in and then just blow their mind with the information that I have. So that's kind of my plan um, <laughs> with mainstream Hollywood. So yeah, so TV and book and just kind of pushing, you know, uh, who I am and what I believe in and, and the information that I have into the masses, right? Even, even the ones who are not necessarily spiritual or understand themselves as spiritual. Yeah. Uh, just to give people a little bit of a reality check. So a, a normal size book, novel, is 50 to 60,000 words. So when Elizabeth says she wrote 40,000 in four days, that's like, that's a book. <laughs> that's really impressive. I don't know how many hours that took you. How many hours did that take you? I have, I, I have no idea, but it was like, you, I wake up, I channel, and I'm channeling until probably one or 2 a.m. And then I sleep for a couple hours and I wake. I mean, that was four days straight. So, and it was, I was like, like a mad woman on my laptop, just like pounding the keyboard so hard, laughing at myself. Cause I'm like, this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is the way to write a book. And I love, I was going to ask you, what do you mean by mainstream? And then you answered it by saying, your own TV show. Yes. I get such a huge yes on that. Like write your own ticket, create your own path. And I got to say, I just want to give you a different point of view about mm -hmm. the mainstream because earlier on, a lot of our conversation was you sharing that paradigms are breaking down. And why I really like this for you is because this could be, you may be the way shower for no more paradigm, even pigeonholing somebody in Hollywood, that you can write your own ticket, I am this and that, and you'll be the and person. And I love that for you. I really do. I love that for you. And I love that for us too, that we shatter the shards of all of that, that we can be the hyphens that we really are, the multi-gifted, multi-talented, multi-buffet uh, of all of who we are. So good for you on the TV show. I totally get that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. What are you next year to dream? What do you want to say to the listeners here at the end? What are your future dreams, goals, all of it? Mm -hmm. My future dream is to see a world where we can all accept one another, understand that we are all human, 
and we all just want to thrive in life and we all deserve to thrive in life. My biggest dream beyond what my career may have in store for me is just this unconditional love and oneness that we can all share and wake up to without any sort of disillusion or separation or polarity. That is my ultimate dream in general for all of humanity and for myself. Mm. Well, again, you can find her at elizabethapril.com. Is there a special, I mean, I watch your YouTube, I'm subscribed, but how, can you give out the URL so people who are interested can go there as well? Yep. So it's just YouTube slash Elizabeth April and same thing, Elizabeth April on Instagram and Facebook as well. Beautiful. I'm so grateful you came to join us today. So important. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. This is great. And for those who would like more, again, it's elizabethapril.com. I end this show from physicist Stephen Hawking, this quote, I believe alien life is quite common in the universe, although intelligent life is less so. Some say it has yet to appear on planet Earth. You can subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast to hear the weekly number one transformation conversation. My next guest next week is Peter Sage. God, what a story he has. An international serial entrepreneur and subject matter expert in human behavior and self-mastery and so much more. Subscribe to the YouTube videos at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to create all your dreams into your reality and clean up all that shadow work around your visibility. You are so wonderfully needed at this auspicious time. <laughs>